Well, I'm glad he saved me, aren't you? Amen. If you're not saved, you can take care of that tonight. Amen. So good to see you in the Lord's house. Glad you're here, and we're looking forward to another night. Boy, wasn't last night wonderful? I mean, it was tremendous. Thank the Lord. God met with us in a mighty way, and we thank him for that, and just appreciate the Spirit of the Lord when he moves, and he certainly did last night. Brother Ricky Craig, would you come to the platform and lead us in a word of prayer? And we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Preachers and visitors, thank you for being here. Uh, We're honored you're here. Looking forward to a great night, and want God to speak to our hearts. Amen? And you pray even now that God just draw a circle around yourself. Say, God, what do you want to speak to me about tonight? Brother Craig, good to have you tonight. Would you pray for us, please? I ate too much to pray. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I confess gluttony, amen. It's good to be in God's house, amen. Let's pray. Father, we sure thank you, Lord, for just loving us. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. And Father, I pray tonight that everything that's done here tonight would honor him, bring glory to his name. God, use every aspect of this service, Lord, the choir, the special singing, but especially the word of God, to speak to hearts. Lord, help us tonight to clear our minds, to open our hearts that we might receive, Father, what you have for us tonight. And, Lord, what you do, we'll be careful to give you the honor and glory for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, it's time to sing. Get a hymn book, turn to number 355. Number 355, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Let's sing it out get right into the service now. Oh, wonderful grace of Jesus, a greater than all my sin.
are singing, He's my comfort.
seated if we have our fellows come this time and receive our offering tonight. And we praise the Lord for the opportunity to give. And I tell you, if you could put a price on what we experienced last night, it would be through the roof. Amen. And it's just wonderful. And may we take care of God's man. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So fellows come this time. We'll receive our offering tonight. And you give as the Lord leads you. And continue to pray for the service. Brother Ron Kaiser, you lead us in a word of prayer. Attorney David Gibbs the third with us uh, tonight. He and Brother Ron Beatty with Return America, and sure appreciate the work that Brother Gibbs and Brother Beatty is doing. And I want them to kind of give us an update on the Rowan County situation, as well as uh, Brother Gibbs present the ministry uh, here. And we receive him gladly tonight. Brother Gibbs, thank you for being here. Brother Beatty, thank you for coming tonight as well. And good evening. How many of you, like me, have already been blessed by that music? I'll tell you, if music like that doesn't fire you up a little bit, your wood is really wet. Uh, there, there, there is the possibility you died and forgot to fall over. That can happen, you know, just 
prop him up and take him with you. But that was wonderful. Enjoyed that immensely. A great report out of Rowan County. I know you had great services here last night. But over 3,000 citizens uh, from across North Carolina joined into Salisbury and sang Victory in Jesus on the county commission steps, circling, by the way, the newspaper that isn't super friendly to us, and letting them know that indeed people do care about still praying in our government and making sure those prayers include the name of Jesus. Now, for those of you that are not aware, I'm with the National Center for Life and Liberty, the NCLL, and I am leading the charge on the case. We represent Rowan County, and currently we're in federal court. I will actually be in court tomorrow. I had the privilege of being at the rally yesterday. I'll be in Durham tomorrow uh, advocating for that case. But we are also going to be before the Supreme Court. And how many pray the Supreme Court gets this one right? Uh, because this will literally decide for the military, for the public schools, for government offices, whether prayers can be uttered and whether the name Jesus can be included. Now, let me tell you, the ACLU of North Carolina, how many know that's not a nice Christian group? They have taken the position for the court that the name Jesus is unconstitutional. Now, they got a little problem, because didn't the founding fathers use the name Jesus also? And so we are very honored to be standing up for the name Jesus. We also represent a lot of churches. How many believe the church is under attack in America? Uh, we stand with Christian schools and colleges. How many believe we ought to be able to train the next generation? Uh, we stand up for life. Uh, how many believe the most fundamental right we have in this country is the right to life? I had the privilege of being the attorney for Terry Schiavo's parents. Some of you may remember that case from a few years ago. Uh, it was a national right to life case. But how many figured out the government's taken over health care and they're broke? And so we're in a society right now where the most core basic freedom we have, the protection of innocent life, is under attack. And then we also have a center called the Center to Advance the USA. How many of you like the spirit of your pastor, Dr. Treber, and others that we need to advance, not retreat? How many believe it's time for God's people to come from the back of the bus and start sitting up front? Uh, they talk about a lot of groups that have come out of the closet. How many believe it's time for Christians to come out? And say, you know what, we are ready to boldly declare the truth of the word of God. And you know what, the, the time has come. Somebody says, well, it's not popular. Uh, how many believe it's right? You know, Acts chapter 4 and verse 29, when they were facing persecution, death, other things, horrible torture, uh, the spiritual forefathers said, Lord, behold the threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, say that word out loud, boldness, they would speak thy word. How many appreciate this bold church? And how many believe we need more boldness in this country right now? So at the National Center, we have that privilege. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Uh, how many of you here believe in prayer? May I see your hand, please? How many believe prayer works? And we want to keep you informed. We want you to pray for the cases. Now, if you can ever help support, we're faith-based ministries. Dr. Beatty with Return America, I know this church supports his work, does a great job. He's going to give you a quick report here in just a minute. Uh, but we count on your prayers, your friendship. The ushers have some envelopes. Guys, come on up. We'll do it from the front. And I'm going to make it real simple. Okay, guys, you have a chunk of envelopes. If you're an adult, who can read? Raise your hand, please. If you're, you don't even have to read well. Okay, just if you can read. And start handing them out real fast, guys. I know ushers pick things up, but we are going to hand them out. So just hand them out real quickly. And then once you get them, an adult who can read, raise your hand, do it real fast. Get a pen or pencil out. Get her pen or pencil out because we are going to fill them out momentarily. Now, uh, this is going to just go for the Ministry of Return America and the National Center. We'll share this information. That's all it will be used for. Uh, so Dr. Beatty can keep you updated on things like the rally and what's happening here in North Carolina. And so you can be aware of the cases and things that I'm handling through the Ministry of the National Center. A couple of my attorneys are actually here tonight. Uh, they've been working on this case and others. Attorney Barbara Weller, Attorney Teresa Nelson, I've lost them in the crowd. Just, oh, there they are, the ladies kind of towards the front. And so you can greet them. And uh, Dr. Beatty, you can make your way up towards the front. He's going to give a quick word. We don't want to take much of Dr. Treeper's time. Uh, while they're handing out the envelopes, and you're getting a pen or pencil out, and you're filling it out. 
uh, because we have discovered uh, that envelopes that get put in Bibles remain there till the rapture. Okay? Uh, ladies, don't put it in your purse. The Lord himself wonders what you carry with you some days. Okay? So just fill it out real quickly. We're going to collect them right back up. If you still have anything put in it, that's fine. Just give us your information, and we will stay connected with you. Again, anything in the envelopes, 100% goes to the cases. But just fill them out real quickly. Uh, let me just mention, um, and this is a little bit of a personal note. I hope you don't mind. Uh, Dr. Jack Treber is one of my favorite preachers in all of America. Now, let me tell you why. He's a great preacher. You already know that from last night. Uh, but he was the pastor that married me and my dear wife. And also, my wife grew up in his church. And uh, I married way above myself. How many here married above yourself? Let me see your hand. Guys, if you didn't raise your hand, that wasn't smart. Uh, but uh, in all of that, uh, Dr. Trever uh, trained and was the, the pastor and the spiritual leader of my dear wife. And she's been a huge blessing in my ministry. And so really excited to hear him preach tonight. But once you've got those envelopes, what I need you to do is fill them out. And in just a moment, we're going to collect them right back up. I know the ushers are still working their way back. And so our balcony and back row crowd, be patient. They are coming to you. Uh, but while they're doing that, Dr. Beatty, just come give an update. Return America. This man is a pastor. Uh, he pastors the Brean Baptist Church. Uh, he is also the president of Return America. Very active all over the state. We work in partnership. A dear friend and a great man of job. And I know you support him, but give him a report. All right. Thank you. It's an honor to be here tonight. And I want to say, first of all, thank you to this pastor and this church. We've been carrying your Sunday services over our radio station, WPIP in Winston-Salem, 8, 8 until 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. I think we started carrying them when George Washington was president, somewhere back there. But uh, been on a long time, and we're so honored to have you, Pastor, and this church on our radio station. And then uh, we're grateful to work hand-in-hand -hand with uh, Brother Gibbs, uh, it's good to know that when problems come, there's somebody that we can pick the phone up. And they'll be there to help us, and that's certainly true with him and the attorneys with him here this evening. And God has used Return America. Our enemies say that Return America is the premier organization in North Carolina that's more responsible than any other group in our state for getting the marriage amendment through the North Carolina legislature. We had 12,000 people to show up in Raleigh on the first time. Three other times we came with several thousand people. And uh, we sent a message to our legislators that if, uh, if you don't get it right, we might have enough influence to send you home and get you an honest job. And uh, so we're grateful that the marriage amendment passed here in the state of North Carolina. We're grateful for the great number that showed up last evening down in Salisbury. We greatly encourage to look out on the streets, see buses lined up, people getting off the buses, to come and stand outside and sing God Bless America together. What a blessing that was. So we thank you for your support. We're grateful to, for the privilege of being here tonight and hearing this dear pastor from California. We appreciate, appreciate him very much. And we ask you to pray for Return America. Uh, we are fighting some great battles here in the state. We get calls all of the time, people needing help, things happening. Don't have time to share those things, but we are in a dilemma, not only in North Carolina, but across this nation. And we're losing our Judeo-Christian values. 3% of the population has changed the marriage laws in some 14 states while the church sat idly by and let it happen. We've got to get outside from our walls. We've got to get out there front and center and let this country once again know that we still believe in Judeo-Christian values. We still believe it's right to pray in the name of Jesus. And we still believe that this nation that was founded upon the precepts of the word of God can still march forward if we keep those precepts in place. God bless you got your envelopes filled out, pass them to the aisles. Ushers, if you would pick those up quickly. As you leave tonight, uh, there is a prayer card on the back table for the National Center. You're welcome to pick that up, and we would appreciate your prayers. Uh, we also have a little electronic download. Uh, how many are into Kindles and eBooks and iBooks and all that? You can download resources. Uh, Return America has a prayer card as well. It's in the lobby as you leave, and so just pass your envelopes to the aisles quickly. Uh, pass them to the end. Let the ushers pick them up off the aisle. Now, if you're sitting by someone who took an envelope and didn't fill it out, raise your hand so we can bother that. No, we wouldn't do anything. Uh, but please turn those in. They can't be mailed. And it would be our honor to keep you informed. And please, please, please pray. You want to know why 3,000 people showed up? Because God's people prayed. 
And, and you know what? Someday our kids, our grandkids are going to be living if God tarries his coming in a nation. And really we have to ask ourselves, what kind of nation are we leaving behind? And at the National Center, we have a simple motto. It's simply this. If it's wrong, fight it. If it's right, fight for it. And how many believe we need a lot more of that in America? Yeah. Pastor, thank you for your friendship. It's an honor to be here. I look forward to hearing Dr. Treber. Thank you, Brother Gibbs. Thank you for taking the time to fill that out. I'm the lady sing at this time. And you pray for them as they do.
Thank God for the miracle. Amen. Thankful for the day when Jesus came knocking at my door. Amen. Thank God for that day. Amen. If you're a God-called man preacher, I want to see you tonight. And I thank the Lord for you come. If you'd stand at this time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and find out who these men are tonight. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Thank you, Brother Vernon, for coming. Yes, sir, Brother Daniel. Yes, sir, Brother Mike. Thank you, Brother Michael. Brother Robert. Amen. Brother Robert led my dad to the Lord. Amen. Sitting right over here in church tonight. Amen. Brother Roger. Amen. Amen. Brother David. Amen. Brother Cox. Thank you. How's your dad doing? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Yes, sir. Brother Pardue. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. That's you. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Brother Bruce Walker. Thank you. Brother Jessup. Thank you, brother. Brother Richie. Amen. Brother Bones. Amen, brother. Amen. Brother Scott. Thank you, Brother Scott. Thank you for being here. Brother Otis. Good to, be, good to have you here, my brother. Thank you. Brother Jerry. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Brother Beatty. Big amen for these folks. Amen. Amen. Appreciate all of God's men. Thank you so much. Have your Bibles ready. And Brother Trevor's going to come and, and speak to us exactly what we needed last night. And uh, thank the Lord for it. Looking forward to tonight. And don't worry about the time. Amen. We used to have two preachers and not get out till 9 o'clock. So 9 o'clock's the presence. He says that's Pacific Coast time. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 We're going to have a special. Let's pray together. And then we're going to have a special, one more song. And then Brother Trevor will come preach to us. Father, we do thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Lord, thank you that your spirit is here. It's evident. Thank you. And Lord, thank you for the wonderful turnout last night in Rowan County. I'm glad you'd be in two places at the same time. Thank you for meeting with them and meeting with us as well. And Lord, we need you tonight. Lord, I understand you don't need us, but we sure need you. And I pray you'll speak to us. Help us. Bless this song. I use it. Well, thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless all of you for being here tonight. What a great crowd uh, last night. And again tonight, I commend this state for uh, going to the uh, city, county, whatever that was. And I appreciate you. We, we need to see America come back to God. And it's not who we put in the White House. It's what happens at the church house and in my house. And we look forward to seeing what God is yet going to do. I believe still we could have revival. Amen. It doesn't take a, a grand crowd of people. It takes one person. You know that three of the greatest revivals that we've known in modern day history over the last four or 500 years have taken place beginning with teenagers, young people. And I'm so persuaded that we ought to invest in the next generation. I said much of that last night. That's why we, and that's why you and others, we run buses. I believe in that. I've pastored the same church long enough now to see the result of the bus ministry. Oh, I know. We have some bus kids in jail. We have some bus kids that have really messed their lives up. We also have some bus kids that are preachers and preachers' wives and full-time Christian servants. I believe in the bus ministry. And those buses run all over our valley. I said, um, I said to our church some while back, our church, when you run, uh, add up all the bus miles, just the bus ministry, not the shuttle and all that. You know, we run shuttles all over the neighborhoods and uh, area. But just the bus ministry, we travel all the way from collective miles, California, to Kansas City every Sunday. And I heard a lady visiting in our church that week somewhere. I, she was telling another lady, she said, you know that church runs buses all the way to Kansas City every Sunday? <laughs> I just let it alone, my goodness. We don't go to Kansas City. We've purchased buses in Kansas City before and on the East Coast in uh, New Jersey and all over the place. But uh, thank God for the bus ministry. I saw your buses out here. I call them wheels of mercy. Those bus kids come up, and I love them. You know, I've been there so long now, 30, almost 38 years, that um, every Sunday, there's not a Sunday goes by. It happens every Sunday. It's generally a single-parent mother 
And she'll come and she said, I rode the buses when I was a girl. I got away from God. But I have kids now. I walk them in Sunday school. It happens every Sunday. And we're so very grateful for it. And I thank you for being who you are. This church, this state is so important. All your churches, I think 23 pastors I counted tonight. And I appreciate you being out on Tuesday night. If anybody needs preaching, it's preachers. That's how I feel. When I go to a conference, I preach with another man. People must think I'm really bad because as soon as he's done preaching, I'm the first one at the altar. It just seems it works that way. I hope it stays that way. And uh, here I've got a sinner right in the front row, right down here. (laughs) Brother Gibbs, I'm glad to see you. He is my dear friend. And I appreciate what the... Uh, what he is doing there in Dallas with his great, great ministry. And I hope that you've taken that card there. I'm one of those that I have it. And um, I didn't fill it out because I don't believe in giving. You know, I just uh, uh, lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, I think it says. We give every month to this. My wife gives every month to this. I don't. I'm still ticked off she's doing that. She doesn't give to me, but she gives to you. And I saw her fill that thing out. I thought, what are you doing, lady? And she said, I love Brother and Mrs. Gibbs. And she supports it monthly. I support it. Our church supports it. Our deacons vote it unanimously to support it. And I appreciate so much what this great ministry is doing. And you ladies that are working here, wherever you were here, right here, you lawyers, God bless you. Put all the lawyers down close to the preaching. Have you noticed that? Any other lawyers in the house tonight? Lawyers, any politicians, we want you down here too. Uh, thanks for leading the way down here. You're in spitting range tonight, Brother Gibbs. Of course, I about, I loaded the truck last night. I thought, when I was preaching, I'm thinking, my goodness, that's the first time to preach here. And I think, I thought, am I supposed to be preaching this message tonight? My wife called me last night. And she said, now, what would you preach? I said, well, I preached a message I've never preached before. She said, what was it? I said, Exodus 32. You know how they changed their worship? They changed their music? They changed their dress? Got real quiet on the phone. She said, oh. That's all she said. She didn't ask, "Was was it good? Did God work? She said, oh. So... I took that, I may have preached the wrong message, but the Holy Spirit said it was the right one. And you you received it so well. And I don't want to come across uh, mean. I don't want to come across like I'm correcting this church. But I don't, I believe if we don't see something happen in our churches soon, it's over. I think it can. He's still on the throne. And I don't care what laws they pass, they're still God. And if we go to jail, he's still there too. But I'd like to see this country free. I tell you, my big burden is for our children, our grandchildren. And on my prayer journal that I use, I I look at that page of my wife and then our three children and then their mates and our nine grandkids. I want them to enjoy what I enjoyed. I have enjoyed living in America, greatest country in all the world. And it's my prayer that we'd see America come back to God. It's been so good to see the Fredericks. Uh, Debbie began babysitting our kids when she was in, you were in eighth grade, I think. And uh, she did such a great job. And Brother Fredericks, I like them to come back. Somehow I just can't keep members. They leave. Your wife left and Debbie left and Brother Fredericks left. But I'm so proud of them. Thank you, Pastor. I got to spend a little time with Pastor this morning and I enjoyed it. Uh, Do you know that having a pastor is a great privilege? None of us are perfect. The truth is we all know that. But what would this church do tonight if you had to find another pastor? I I mean, pulpiteers and guys that are looking for a spot are a dime a dozen. But I'm talking about a real man of God. What would you do? And I know many men of God. These, I, I'm honored to see Brother Beatty tonight. All you men of God. Brother Bobby sitting there last night. Just, it was so wonderful. And I tell you what, those men already have a spot. I, I know of churches right now, and if you ask me for one of the names, I won't give it to you. Because if you're looking 
that God knows your name. I've got so many churches right now, I just tell them, I can't send you a man. I don't know of one. I don't know who to send. I have churches in my file right now. There's, they're calling me and said, could you send us a graduate? Our graduates of our college are taken before graduation. They have places to go. I mean, they're out of there. They're not laying around in our church waiting for a spot. And if they're there very long, I said, just go find a place. Just go start something. I say that because you have a man of God. Amen. Love the pastor. And in all these churches, you ladies, you love the pastor's wife. If you can keep the preacher's wife encouraged, she can keep the preacher encouraged, he can keep you encouraged. <laughs> he won't skin you every time if we keep the right people encouraged. God bless all of you. I certainly love Carolina, North Carolina. It's wonderful. Take your Bibles tonight, Jeremiah chapter 14, please. Jeremiah chapter 14. Once again tonight, I do have my eye on that clock. I can't see it, but I have my eye on it. <laughs> Here it's, it's uh, 7.55, it says. California's 4.55, so we'll preach to about 7 o'clock tonight. Shall we do that? I won't preach long. But I am praying, I've been praying that God would do something tonight. He wants to. Great meetings require a prepared preacher. I believe my heart's been prepared. Great people that want a hunger for the word of God, thirsting after righteousness. And of course, it takes God Almighty. I know God's going to do his part. I'm not worried about God. And I know I've tried to do my part in preparation of heart. And I believe you have too. You would not be here on this Tuesday night had you not want God to really work. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 14. The Bible says, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. A dearth, you know what it is, it's a drought. When God judges a people, he does it often with water or the lack thereof or with fire. Our governor, back in August, signed a decree that I mentioned last night that as of January 1st, 2014, in the public schools of our state, that boys and girls can now use the same restrooms. They have to figure out if they're a boy or a girl, and if they are a boy in a boy's body, but they feel like they're a girl, they can go in the girl's locker room. They can go in the girl's showers. They can go in the girl's restrooms. And almost this entire eastern seaboard has lauded our government, our, our governor, for what he has done to the 6.2 million children. I told our church one day later, I said, judgment is coming. We'll have an earthquake, that's judgment. We'll have a fire, we'll have a dearth, we'll have a flood, something's coming. That night it came. California has been on fire since the middle of August and it can't stop. Largest fire in California history, it has affected our pristine Yosemite National Park. Another one broke out and now another three still going. Colorado moved against the children when they said marijuana is legal. It started last June with a fire. Thousands of homes affected. And now it's the flood. That's not a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. 
the sin city up there in New Jersey. They lost their boardwalk and all that nonsense with the flood two years ago, and now a fire destroyed it again. God says, I want to talk to you about concerning the dearth. Why your children were not going to have water, he said. That's what I want to talk to you about. Jeremiah makes it very clear. He said, I'm coming to you on behalf of God concerning the dearth. Now, what was with the dearth? Well, the ground was chapped. The animals had no grass. He says that in verse number, verse number five, the hind also calf. Verse four, the ground was chapped. There was no rain. The hind also calved in the field for circuit because there's no grass. The wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Oh, Lord. Though our iniquities testify against us, and America, they do. Do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many, and we have sinned against thee. Now, my say, we'll see tonight in the text, it's wonderful to get things right with God. It's the right thing. But there's still consequences for those that follow us. I'm trying to do everything I can so my grandkids don't have those consequences. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would. We'll go back to chapter two to lay some groundwork here in the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, let's go back to chapter two and verse number five. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they've gone far from me, they've walked after vanity and become vain. Verse number eight, he talks about the priests and the pastors and the prophets. They walked after those things that do not profit. Verse 11, hath a nation changed their gods, which are no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. We preached about change last night. Chapter three, chapter three, verse three. Therefore, three, three. Therefore the showers have been withholding. Why were the showers withholding? Because of the whoredom, because of the pollution of the land, because of their sin, they were greatly polluted because of the harlot tree, he says in verse one. Therefore the showers have been withholding and there has been no latter rain. Verse number 11 talks of their backsliding. Verse number 12, backsliding. Verse 14, backsliding. And God says, acknowledge thine iniquity. Verse 13, verse 20, as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so ye have dwelt, dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children, of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. And they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return ye backslide children. Chapter four, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Chapter five, verse 13. The prophets shall become wind and the word is not in them. Chapter number five, verse Number 23, this is a people that hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. Verse 24, neither they say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. Brother Beatty, that sounds what's going on, the nonsense of politicians in this great state. Verse number 25, six, verse 25, your iniquities have turned away the things and your sins have withholding the good things for you. I, I, I look at that. The, God says, I've got some good things for you, but I'm not gonna give them to you because of your sins. I don't want my children and grandchildren to miss the blessings of God because of my sins. I want my people to get as much as they can. I want God always blesses a man. God blesses his church. I want God to so bless my life that the overflow is on their lives. Let's not forget that. My Bible says, if you will, in chapter number verse six and verse 15, thus saith the Lord, standing in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Notice what the Bible says in chapter number seven, verse number 23, obey my voice and I will be your God. Verse 24, but they hearken not. 
Verse 28, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Chapter 8, verse 12, were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. We could continue to go through, and I'm just passing through quickly, but I find myself back here in chapter number 13 and verse 10. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, I walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall it be even as this girl which is good for nothing. And then our text. The word of the Lord, chapter 14, verse one. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. I'm begging you tonight, as I did last night, I normally, not on the same similar subject, not after tonight, but I am, as you, so, so burdened that we pass something down to the next generation of value. I want to pass what I said last time. I love the old Bible, the precious old Bible. I want my grass, my little grandkids carrying their Bibles to church. What a sight it is. Sometimes the Bible is bigger than they are. I watch them carry that Bible. I watch my grandkids in school now as they take their Bible. I talk to them. They read their Bible every day. That's what I want for our grandkids. I don't want them to know how to play every computer game. I'm glad our kids are not raising their children on an iPhone or an iPad or on the TV. I'm glad they're raising them around the Word of God. I want this book to get in their life and heart. And thank God they're putting it in their children's life. I love this book. Don't toy around with it. Don't check out all these. When I went to our church 38 years ago, we didn't have all these versions. We've never had a revival outside of the King James Bible, by the way. Stick with this same old book. I love the Bible tonight. I tell you what, I like the, I love the old song book. Stick with the song book. There is a fountain. We heard it tonight, filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's vein. I was in my room today and singing away. Oh, I tell you what, I, I tell you what, I get in my car and I play the CD. I'm a good singer. <laughs> with that car, I turn that radio up and I was singing with the fellow the other day, a song he was playing on, on the CD. He was singing and I was singing. And I got thinking, I think I might be a little bit better than this fellow right here. <laughs> And I kept tuning him down. And the more I tuned him down, it got real bad, real fast. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I wish, I know how it's supposed to sound. I just can't make it sound that way. I, I worked for a pastor 40 years ago. And he said to me, now, Brother Jack, he said this on a Monday, Sunday, we had the best choir we've ever had. We had the best music in the church, congregational singing. And I was the music director. And he said, Brother Jack, he said, you sang a solo in my Sunday school class. I said, here's what I want. Keep leading the choir like you did it. Keep leading the congregation like you did it. But don't you ever sing a solo in this church again. You don't have a solo voice. <laughs> I've never sung after that ever again, a solo voice, a, a, a solo in church. I just, I don't think I could do it. I'd be nervous wrecked. I said to my wife, why don't you, she does the music schedule, why don't you ever put me on the music schedule? She said, just sing every time you preach. What do you mean you're on every time? <laughs> I think, I, you know, somehow it just comes over. I can do it then, but I couldn't. I, you, you people that sing, I, 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 I admire you. I couldn't stand up here and just sing. You say, it, it doesn't make sense. I know a lot of things don't make sense. You've got to remember I'm from California and uh, that's part of it. <laughs> Oh, stick with the Bible and stick with the psalm book. And, and, and I'll get to my message, maybe. <laughs> stick with the church. Yeah. Jesus gave his life for the church. Yeah. Don't shy away from that. We, we got all these crazy things. World, what, nationwide, everywhere I go, I see it. Uh, we, we see uh, the day star. What's the day star? Is that like an on star in a Chevy vehicle? Day star with the spring, the bridge, the branch, the grape, the orange, 
the door. Uh, come on, get a name. It's getting quiet in here now. I just touched on it. I can, I can always tell when I touch on something. I may not look too smart, but I know what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with the word Baptist. There's nothing wrong with the word church. Friend, listen, Jesus died, gave his life for the church. Almost all the New Testament was written to the churches. Let's not, let's not think we can approve on the church. It's God's institution. Baptists are doing what they're doing up there in Washington, D.C. They're redefining the home and we're redefining the church. And then we wonder why we have a trouble and problems. This nation doesn't need less church, it needs more church. So we're doing away with Sunday night. Stick with Sunday night. Do with Wednesday, stick with Wednesday night. Stick with prayer meetings. Stick with those things that have worked and brought us. How are we doing that? We're cutting that out. Stay with Sunday school. My mother and dad are 90 years of age. I'll ask them on Saturday night. I talk to them, try to talk to them every day. I'll say, now, you're going to stay home tomorrow, aren't you? No, son, why would we stay home? They're both so deaf, bless their hearts. They can't hear a thing that's going on, but they said, we're not missing church. I talked to my dad on a Saturday one time about maybe a year ago. I said, dad, what are you and mom doing today? He said, son, I have to call you back later. I don't have time right now. I said, what are you doing that's so important? He said, They've been married 65 years. He said, we're going to a marriage seminar today at church. I said, what are you going to a marriage seminar? He goes, well, we might pick up a few things. Who knows? Thank God for the church. Stick with it. If we don't pass the church down, if we don't pass the songs and hymns down and spiritual songs we saw last night, if we don't pass the Bible down, if we don't pass holiness down, where are our grandkids going to get it? You young couples with children, it's a case of the stupids not to go to church. With Greek again, I'm sorry for using Greek words today, but uh, it's not brilliant. It's not smart to take the thing out of their life that they need the most. They need a Sunday school class. They need, they need Sunday morning. They need Sunday night. They need Wednesday. They need a pastor. They need singing. They need an altar. Bury that in their heart. I'm not saying they're all going to accept it. Train up a child in the way it should go, not the way it will go. Everybody has free choice. I like David. David's getting ready to die. Second Samuel 23 or 24, I think it's 23. And he talks about a king and, and leadership. And he said he ought to live justly. And all the things, the qualities, and he ought to be like the morning light and bringing light to the area. That's what he said. And then David says this. Although, I like it, watch it. Although with my house, it be not so. He said, I lost my son Absalom. I lost my daughter Tamar. I lost my son Amnon. I lost my purity. But bless God, I may drag myself to the finish line, but I'm getting across the finish line. Some, I don't understand it. We have a son goes away where our daughter goes away, where our grandchild goes away, and we quit on God. You still have a race to run. I tell you what I've watched. I've watched a a whole generation come up in our church now and several generations and so many of them live for God and then we get the prodigals too. And I watched when a mother and a daddy with a broken heart dragged themselves to church and hardly at first couldn't even sing. I just watch them. And they stay. I've watched those prodigals come back home. They'll come. I'm getting where I'm going, but I'm having too good a time getting there, so I'm taking my time. There's a dearth. There's a dearth. No grass for the animals. No water. The ground is chapped. Guess who it's going to affect? We're getting there. 
Guess who it's going gonna, it's gonna to touch? Their life. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't mind if I have to go through heartache. But if I can prevent my grandkids from going through heartache, I, Brother Gibbs, you know my kids. You know our grandkids. I'll tell you what, I carry this picture. Uh, such a beautiful family. I'll leave it here and for five dollars afterwards you can just come and look at it. <laughs> Take this envelope right here and fill your name out. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I'll do for a hundred dollars. I'll send you a two by two picture of this right here. <laughs> We're going to get them signed up tonight, aren't we, Pastor? <laughs> Preacher. But we'll leave one of these here as a reminder that my wife is paying every month and our church is and I am too. And I'll leave this right here that you might see them. Oh, I'm so blessed. I don't want them to suffer because of my foolishness. I don't want there to be a, a Sunday night. God forbid. Now those little nine grandkids in my church, watch your papa come to the pulpit and say, I've dishonored the name of Christ. And tonight, I'm residing in the ministry. Satan hath desired to have you sift you like wheat. I'm not casting stones at any other man. Everyone has a race to run. But can you imagine if my little grandkids had to hear their papa from age 11 all the way down to age one. Papa's residing in the ministry tonight. That lady that stayed with me for 41 years this December who's just poured her life into my life would have to hear that in disgrace her husband had to resign the pulpit. No, no, by the grace of God. That's why these men of God stand. We're going to pray for every one of them and their wives. We'd stay right because the shout is in the trump of God is about ready to shout. I'm talking tonight on a subject. You'll see it here in a moment, and then I won't be long. I don't want these kids of mine and the kids in our church. Fredericks, you know so many of them. Oh, I'm so blessed. On Sunday night in our church, the second grade and below going out to their wiggle worms class, church. And they start coming up here. Those little boys, I imagine there's over a hundred of them or so, and they come through here and I shake their hand. And then they go over here and see my wife and she gives them something every week. And then they're off to class. Oh, they hand me notes. They say, I, I love you, Pastor. A little girl sent me a note this week and she had a, a penny she taped her little note and a, her sister had a nickel taped well, that's going in their file. Because I have a file on all these little kids and these parents and adults. And when it comes time for a funeral, or it comes time for a wedding, I just pull their file out. And I look at all those little cards. Here's a quarter, Pastor. Look at that right there. I found a quarter down here. <laughs> Glory to God. Things are looking up, brother, right now. Woo! I found a quarter. I should have been looking up like this, but I mean, it just jumped out at me. The average American, time out of the message, loses $75 a year. I walk around looking all the time. I'm going to get that $75 because I know if I don't, Brother Gibbs will. I just know that. So we're, we're, we're doing pretty good, brother. Bring a quarter by tonight or a dollar, put it right there in that envelope, and that would be great. Okay. We laid the groundwork. You said, good night. That's been 30 minutes, groundwork. I know. Now the brief two-hour message. <laughs> the truth is we can wrap it up quickly. Verse 3. The nobles 
That's the, the leadership. That's the mamas and daddies. That's the papas. The nobles have sent their, what's the next two words, church? Let's try it again. And the nobles have sent their, that's my nine little grandkids. That's, that's sent in Ashlyn and Titus and TJ and Trey. That, that's, that's sending Riley and Hudson and Reagan and Landon and Lawson. Whatever happened to Sam and George and Pete? I tell my kids, come on, just come up with a normal name. They got all these other names. I like them now. Brother Tim, who preached here, he told me the name of his firstborn son. I said, you got to be kidding. Where'd you get that name, son? I didn't say that. I thought, well, I've never heard that name before. Landon? I've never heard that name. How many have heard Bill or Billy Joel or Bobby Boo or something? I don't know. Our daughter said, Dad, I'm going to name our girl Reagan with the female spelling. I said, how do you spell it female? Just put an H in there, R-H, Reagan. I kind of like, I, I like Ronald Reagan, so she's my Ronald Reagan, I guess. <laughs> Lost the crowd on that. Maybe you didn't like him. And they sent their nobles and their little ones to the waters. Remember what's happening in verse, what, what's happening in verse 1, Clat church? There's dearth. There's dearth. And the dad said, you little ones, you boys, I want you to go to get some water. And they came to the pits and found two words, church. What is it? Why did they receive no water? God told you back in chapter 3, when there's sin, there's going to be no water. And the Bible says they sent their little ones to the waters and they came to the pits and they found no water and they returned with their vessels, what? Empty. Empty. Here it is. Here it is tonight. I, I don't Is Luke your boy in here tonight, pastor? Well, give me a, is Luke here? Is he asleep? <laughs> He's so much like his dad, isn't he? <laughs> now Luke gets fired up after church last night. He was ready to go. I bet if I ask him, let's go watch Andy Griffith, he would have been ready. You watch Andy Griffith here, don't you? Yeah, boy, he would have been a good pastor. But nonetheless, uh, Barney would have been a good assistant pastor, I'll tell you that. Know what I'm talking about, barn? Amen. Go back to this. Oh, I'll, I'll be a little quiet, Luke. You've got someone that stays awake in this church, Pastor? Somebody that's young, maybe. You got anybody? It's a little one. Maybe a front row down here. Where's Daniel? Daniel? He's in the den. Uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Come on up here, Daniel. Look at that. How old are you, Daniel? Eight. Your wife with you tonight? You don't have any front teeth. When'd you lose those things? One this year and one last year. One this year, one last year. You know the going rate in California when you lose a tooth, you know how much it is? $25 per tooth. Yes. How much did you get? $2. I got a quarter down here for you if you want that. <laughs> Daniel. What's your middle name, Daniel? Lance. Lance? Daniel Lance. What's your last name? Brian. Good. I'm glad to meet you. And your wife's name is? <laughs> got your eye on any of them? All right. You're my buddy, Daniel. And I'd like you to go to the pits over here. And I want you to go down there and thank you. What a good boy. Get some water, will you? You lower it out. Lower it down there. There he goes. He's down at the pits. I'm over here having a good time in my sin, just doing what I want to do. My boy's working over there. Come on back here, Daniel. Bring those buckets back here. Bring those vessels back. I'm preaching to us tonight on empty vessels. How you doing, Daniel? There's no water. 
there's no water. <laughs> and though Daniel makes it with me to be humorous, he's the one that's going to pay for me. Thank you, Daniel. I'll let you be seated. I think you have $5. See me afterwards. I give it to you. <laughs> Taking it from your love offering here, Brother Gibbs. <laughs> Daniel, come on up here. I don't have five. Come on up here. Will you, Daniel? I got 10. Will that be better yet? Yeah. You might even get two teeth with that. What's that? That'd be fine, fine. Zero, he says, zero will be fine for me. I can't understand you. Do you speak like you're from, what country are you from? Um, North Carolina. North Carolina, North Carolina. <laughs> you're a good boy, brother. Do you go to English class around here? Do you folks go to grammar or English? To, so you, you have to forgive me when I talk to you before and after church. You talk to me and I, I have to have you do it. I can't even understand it. I like it. I just don't know what country you're from. <laughs> the Bible says that there was no water and they returned with their vessels empty. Empty vessels. Church, and I am done. Sick with this. Here's what I was singing in my room this afternoon. Think, I said last night, music ought to have a lot of scripture words to it. Listen, listen to this. Tell me. Bless it. Is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. Assurance. That's in the Bible. Jesus. Is that in the Bible? Is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. That's in the Bible. I'm an heir of salvation. That's in the Bible. Purchased. I'm purchased of God. I'll do the singing. I mean, this is my show tonight, friends. I'm on the cue card tonight. I'm, I'm born of his spirit. And I'm, and I'm, I'm lost in his. This. Sing it together. Here we go. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising. Praising my Savior all the day. See, that's what we want our kids to enjoy. When they go down to the well, they can pull up some songs like the B-I-B-L-E. They can pull up some songs like, uh, praise God, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Praise God, we can go down and pull up amazing grace. How sweet the sound. And guess what else I see in that? Well, I find the word of God bubbling up in my soul. You see, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, the next generation is going to be shorted. They won't know what weeping and invitation is about. They won't know what it's like to get happy in church. They won't know what it's like watching some of these folks sing tonight watching the tears come. It's okay. Nothing wrong with it. And by the way, the opposite, get happy. You see, music, good music, ought to, is that my ride? (laughs) I'm getting done, I'm getting done. Music, music ought to put a tear in your eye or a shout in your voice, or a hand in the air, or maybe a little tap of the toe. It ought to do something to move you. Empty vessels. I, 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 I have a picture from last year. We take one every year. We're missing several. Maybe it's two years ago. That sweet wife. She suffered enough. When she was young and her mother with eight kids, a preacher's wife, 
died of cancer. She came home from Bible college to care for a kindergarten boy and a seven-year-old girl and an 11-year-old boy and a 13-year-old and a 15, 16-year-old. She, she suffered enough. And for 43 years, she's never had a mother for Mother's Day. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to do everything I can to live so right before God so she can get the blessing that God pours out on my life. I don't want her to have an empty pit. Brother Tim, that boy of ours, I never told him he'd be a preacher. I never, I've never even hinted toward it. I prayed before he was born. Oh, God, if you like Samuel's mother did, Hannah, God, if you'll give up to us, we're going to give them right back to you. And I would be so thrilled. Whatever you want him to be, have him be a plumber, that's okay. But God, I'm asking you to take him to preach the gospel. Oh, I'll never forget that day in that wicked city of San Francisco, California. We were using a church house, big, big church. That Baptist church that day, he walked forward, knelt right over here and said, Lord, I'll preach the word. That girl, Tiffany, I prayed that she'd marry a preacher, a servant of God. For 14 years, she's been married to a man of God that preaches. Tabitha, our last baby, and oh, God gave her a man of God that teaches in the Christian school every day of his life for all these years. And then they gave us nine grandbabies. I don't want Brother Gibbs those kids to go to the well and say, Papa never put anything, Nana never put anything in the well. He said, well, Brother Treber, I'm old. It's too late. The kids are gone. They're away from God. The grandkids, wait, 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 wait. And I promise you I'll be done here. I hope in no way I'm irreverent. I would not want to be. I got happy in my room today thinking about this. Though every day our Lord Tabernacle on planet Earth was important, his greatest work came on the last day. He didn't come to die in, a, in, 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 in Gethsemane. That's why he cried out, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away. Well, he didn't want to die in a garden. He didn't come to die in a garden as his sweat and drops of blood. He wasn't asking God not to let him go to the cross. For this cause, I came into the world. That's why he came to die on a cross, not in a garden. And he said, let it pass. I don't want to die here. And he died on the cross. And he cried out, it is finished. What was finished? He paid for all the sin of mankind. You might be in the twilight days of your life. Let me say, your greatest work may be on your last day. Samson's greatest work was on his last day. I got thinking all the last days in the Bible or the last years. Paul's last 14 years were the best of his life. Perhaps you could be a prayer warrior and pray your family back to God. Perhaps you're sitting on a nest of money I don't know any need this church has. I don't know if you need another building, or if it, but perhaps you could build that building. Why leave it for everybody to fight over it? Getting quiet here. <laughs> don't let the devil convince you that's over and you're a failure and you're no good because you don't have nine grandkids. That, you may not have even been saved or you may have been away from God, but you're here tonight. I'm coming to you on behalf of the next generation. Would you run the bus? Would you teach the class? Would you sing in the choir? Would you serve God? Would you become a prayer warrior? There's something God wants you to do so you can put water in the pits for the Daniels. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Lord, I I enjoyed being so much with the people of God tonight. They've helped me. 
I so thank you that I could hear this report from Brother Beatty, what this state has declared to do. I'm thankful to be with my dear friend, Dr. Gibbs. I'm thankful for this good pastor. How I thank you for Brother White and his wife, their sweet family. To see the Fredericks and see so many friends that I know, I've been so refreshed. God, tonight I stand before these people as they are. I'm so burnt, so burnt for that next generation, that bus kid in our, in our, our city that has no hope unless we reach them. How many with their heads bowed and eyes closed say, Brother Treber, I, I can see to it by the grace of God my part. I'll see to it that I can put some water in those, those pits. I'll pray, I'll work, I'll serve, I'll give, I'll be right with God, I'll have a shout, I'll bring it back to church, I'll be faithful unto death. Pray for me all over this house and just slip your hand up. I want to be numbered with that crowd right there. God can count on me. Keep them up for a moment, will you please? All over the house, God can count on me. God bless you. Wonderful. Who's here? You may put them down. Who's here without Christ tonight? Say, oh, Brother Jack, I need to get saved. I put it off long enough. I've heard for the first time about someone told me recently how to be saved. I need to get saved. Pray for me across this house, up in the balcony of the Lord. I need to be saved. Would you lift your hand right now, please? Please, would you lift your hand? God bless you, sir. Thank you. Now, here's what we want you to do. Here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be saved tonight. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I got saved 56 years ago, 57 almost now. Years ago, I don't regret a mile of it. Oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. God's willing to save your soul tonight, sir. Would you come? Your coming may cause others to come. Pastor, in a moment, be here at the front. When the pianist begins to play or sing, or whoever sings or whatever they do here, when you hear that, would you come? Let's stand together, please, all over the house. Christians, I'm going to ask you to come. Let's, let's come and pray about this. Commit this thing of empty vessels for the kids. Empty vessels, empty pits. Come on, would you come? I want to pray with you tonight. Let's, let's put some water back in the pits. Preachers, preachers, another second win. Go again. God bless you. Come on right now. Who else? Oh, what a good song that is. No, do not pass me by. Deacon, we need you. Deacon, we need you tonight. Deacon's wife, preachers, preachers' wives, preachers' kids, Sunday school teachers and bus workers and faithful church members. I want to have a prayer of dedication with you at the altar. If it gets too difficult to kneel just right where you're at there, then just stand. We'll have a word of prayer in just a moment. Who else? And folks are keep they're coming. That's it. Come on. I just believe we ought to let this thing come on for a while. Pastor, it might be better if you would run the invitation right now. They're still coming. I'd like whenever you're ready to pray with these, I'd ask you to come another stanza. Pastor will take the invitation. Thank you so much. The bottom of my heart for these two days. Let's not miss the invitation right now. Would you come on this stanza? Pastor, have prayer in a minute. Would you come? Would you come? Right now, would you come, please? God spoke to your heart. You need to come on. Come on now. What are you going to pass on? Some rusty money? You're going to give them something worth having. What are you going to give them? God spoke to your heart. Come on. Don't wait. Don't wait. In the balcony on the main floor. Come on. Let God do a work. While she plays, come on. Do you care enough about your children, your grandchildren, the next generation? It's not somebody else's responsibility, it's ours. We don't pass it off on the school. Don't pass it off on the grandparents. It's our responsibility. It's yours. Don't pass it off on the government. It's our job. May God help us. May God help us. May God seal it deep in our souls. 
do our part. While she plays, would you come? Father, we thank you for these that have come and more those that may have made decisions in their seats. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you'll watch over every family represented. And God, I pray that the one who is stole will steal no more. God, help us, I pray, to stand firm for our homes, our families. God, may we do our part to give them something eternal, something of value. Every day of our life, may we pray and beg you to ever have your hand upon those in our family, those in our church, in our nation. God, help us to do our part. Help us to pass the baton. God, help us. Thank you for the message tonight. Oh, we love you. Thank you for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may look this way. Wow, what a message. What a message. Thank you, Brother Treber. And uh, thank you. Well, I'm glad we got something worth passing on. Amen. Amen. Thank God for it. Thank you for being here. And a great crowd tonight. I know we got many things to do. Thank you for taking time to be here. And I trust you won't soon forget what was preached from God's Word tonight. Don't forget it. Uh, don't forget it. The devil won't forget it. He won't forget it. He'll come to take the seed of the Word of God that's been preached tonight out of your heart before you get home. And may we stand firm. May we stand firm. Thank you for being here. Brother Treber, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come and to be with us. Thank you so much. What a blessing. What a blessing. Choir members, great job. All the special singing, everything great. Those who've cooked this week, thank you. It's not over. We've got one more night tomorrow night. Amen. But to thank you. Don't forget about the table in the back. Brother Treber's got a table. Uh, Brother Gibbs, Brother Beatty as well. So please be sure and go by and get some materials if you would. Thank you once again for being here. Brother, Brother Steve Cox, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please?